Hi friends, do you know how much money we need to be in India's top 1% rich club? It is 1.45 crore. Yes, as per the wealth report 2023, one needs to have 1.45 crore rupees to be in India's top 1% rich. Now, interestingly, if we look at salaried people in India, we will see that more than 80% of salaried Indians run out of the money before the month ends. And more interestingly, 34% of salaried Indians run out of the money before the middle of the month. So this data tells us that majority of Indians are not likely to cross 1 crore mark in their lifetime. And this is the harsh reality. But more importantly, why does this happen? Well, the root cause is that people spend a lot of efforts and a lot of their time earning money but do not really understand how to manage their hard-earned money and end up making money mistakes. So in this video, I will present to you six worst money mistakes that we all must avoid so that we don't get poorer as our life progresses. I will not give you gyan, I will give you six simple points that are practical and action oriented that you can start implementing from today itself. With that, let's get this video started. Mistake number one is not optimizing loan repayments. All of us have home loans, car loans, etc. And many of us do not really understand how to optimize our loan repayments. For this, let me give you a quick example. So what you see on my screen is a loan calculation that I'm doing and you will see that let us say tomorrow you go and buy a flat or a house for 80 lakh rupees and you make 20% down payment so you are taking 64 lakh rupees of loan and let us assume that the interest rate is 9% and you are taking a loan for 20 years of time horizon now if you look at the calculations you will see that you will be paying 57,000 rupees per month as EMI and on this loan of 64 lakh rupees you will end up paying 74 lakh rupees of interest meaning that total you will be end up paying 1 crore 50 4 lakhs. Now comes the most interesting part. Please pay the attention here because I am going to run you through three different scenarios to land an important concepts when it comes to loan repayments. So the scenario number one is let us say after one year of your loan, you want to prepay your loan by 5 lakh rupees. Let me just show you the calculations for this. So for this, what we are going to do is going to go and do a one time prepayment of 5 lakh rupees. So 5 lakh rupees here. And let us say that you are doing this after one year. So let us go ahead and select 2024 September exactly after one year you are making a 5 lakh rupees of prepayment when you do that this 5 lakh rupees of your prepayment have reduced your interest by 20 lakh rupees remember without prepayment your total interest was coming at around 74 lakh rupees now since you have made 5 lakhs of prepayment after one year of this loan repayment, then your interest is getting reduced by close to 20 lakh rupees. So scenario number two is let us say you are making a prepayment, let us say in the year 2030. So let us go ahead and select 2030 September here and you're making a prepayment of 5 lakh rupees. Now look at the calculations and you will see the interest has come down by 10 lakh rupees. So in scenario one, your 5 lakh rupees of prepayment reduced your interest by 20 lakh rupees. In scenario number two, which is after six years, you are making a five lakh rupees of prepayment, then your interest is coming down by 10 lakh rupees. Now, let me run you through the scenario number three that if we do the same five lakhs of prepayment, let us say in year 2037. So, let us go ahead and select 2037 September, and you will see that this five lakh rupees of prepayment is reducing your interest only by 4 lakh rupees. So one thing that is very very clear here is that if we make our loan repayments towards the beginning of the loan duration then your interest reduces massively and if you make the loan repayment towards the end of the loan tenure then your interest is not going to get reduced massively. This concept you need to understand because this will help you to calculate when should you actually make your repayments or when should you not make the repayment because many people will end up doing the repayment towards the latter part of their home loan duration which is a mistake and many people do not make the prepayments towards the first few years of the loan and hence losing lakhs of rupees of advantage and why this happens very simply if you look at this chart you will see that orange bar is your interest payment and green bar is your capital payment so in the beginning of your loan repayment e emis what really happens is that every emi that you're paying 80 to 90 percent of that emi is only going to pay the interest and this interest is on your capital so larger the capital interest is going to be large if you manage to reduce this capital in the beginning then what is going to happen is this interest component reduces massively and most people do not understand how the home loan repayments work so a humble request for you is go ahead and look at your loans 
understand what are the prepayments benefits that you are going to get and of course read the terms and conditions of your loan because sometimes there are penalties that the loan providers levy so you need to be really careful but the point is very very simple by optimizing your loan repayments you can save lakhs of rupees and this is something that i encourage everybody to do these calculations for your own home loans if you like this point please press the like button to support my channel and let me know in the comments a simple thank you because it will encourage me to come up with such videos more often Moving to mistake number two. Mistake number two is not really understanding the elephant in the room, which is the real inflation in India. So the real inflation in India is education inflation, which is hovering at around 12%, a massive, massive rate at which the education inflation is growing in India. And if you understand this game, you are going to stop complaining about onions and tomatoes prices because what I'm going to run you through will just blow your mind. So let us take the example of engineering degree today. In India, if you go through any decent engineering engineering college today you're going to pay at least 30 lakh rupees for four years of engineering degree and if i take 12 percent inflation rate so have a look at my screen you will see 30 lakh rupees here and 12 percent inflation rate and if we look at 15 years down the line if the education inflation continues to grow at 12 percent you would need close to 1 crore 64 lakh rupees to get your son or your daughter engineering degree that is the cost that we need to talk about not about tomatoes prices or onions prices because this really matters it is going to leave a really big dent in our pockets now you might think that rahul this is exaggeration who is going to pay one crore plus for a engineering degree so let us forget about 15 years from now let us talk about right now what is happening right now few medical colleges in india are charging more than 1 crore rupees for a MBBS degree. For example, D.Y. Patil Medical College in Navi Mumbai is charging close to 1.4 crore rupees for a MBBS degree. You go and have a look at this. Chennai's Sri Ramchandra Medical College is charging close to 1 crore rupees for a MBBS degree. Also, if you still do not believe, have a look at this snippet. You will see that the cost for school education is crossing 30 lakh rupees for one single kid. Now, in order to get quality education, parents are never going to be debt free because the first 10 to 15 years of their career they are going to pay their home loan repayments and after 15 years they are going to pay for their education loans for the kids and they will never be debt free point is very simple education inflation is going to kill all our savings if we do not plan for it proactively and right now we need to plan for it so the simple solution is that the part of our portfolio must be geared towards the education of our kids and for this we must do thorough research there are a lot of sensible investment opportunities available in the market so for example in cases of the girl child you can consider government's Sukanya Samradhi Yojana you can consider investing in index mutual funds you can also consider investing in direct stocks I have created a lot of videos around investments so you can consider subscribing to my channel also you can consider joining my YouTube member community because I post in-depth analysis on direct stocks mutual funds and so on and you will get benefited from that and talking about investments that brings me to my third point that people make a lot of mistakes around investment let me now walk you through that the third money mistake that people make is that people want to be rich not financially free and let me drive this point home by giving you a very simple example if you start investing merely 10,000 rupees every single month at the age of 30 by the time you turn 50 you are going to have 1 crore rupees with you assuming a 12% return that you can get from an index mutual fund now the beauty is that if you leave this 1 crore rupees invested then this 1 crore rupees is going to give you 1 lakh rupees of monthly income for the rest of your life from the age of 50 years and secondly you will not need to pay any tax on this 1 crore rupees because you left this invested now the most fun part is that you invested 10,000 rupees per month and you're getting 1 lakh rupees back which is 10 times from what you invested and you still have that 1 crore rupees invested with you you might now think about inflation so let me also bring that into picture so if I consider 5% inflation rate the value of that 1 lakh Lakh rupees per month you are going to get at the age of 50 onwards is going to be 37,000 rupees per month so 37,000 rupees per month in today's term is not a bad money if you are only paying 10,000 rupees per month from your pocket and if you are struggling to understand this simple calculation please pause go back and watch this section again because it is absolutely important that you understand this tiny calculation because most people don't get it and I can also bet that most people who are watching this video can easily save 10,000 rupees every month for the next 20 years without any problems whatsoever but you know why most people don't do this because most people want to get rich overnight 
I get so many comments, so many messages from people that Rahul, tell us a penny stock and we are going to invest 10,000 rupees in it. And in the next two to three years, it should become 10 lakh rupees. This is the reason that most people do not make money in stock market. I'm not saying that penny stocks are bad investments. My point is that if somebody only has 10,000 rupees per month to invest, penny stocks is not a solution for their problems. Their problem will be solved by the time horizon. Time is on their side. Let the money get compounded over a long period of time because that that is where they are going to get the most benefit out of their 10,000 rupees every month investment rather than investing their money into a penny stock. The fourth money mistake that people are making is what I call is placebo effect of spending. For this, I need to take two examples. So the first example is have a look at my screen and this article was published in ET just few weeks ago and it says that Indians are borrowing SUVs more than the homes that they need. And if you read this, you will see that Sunita Singh, a 30 year old working professional who wanted to buy a flat in Mumbai but when she looked at the prices overall prices of a 1 BHK flat she figured out that she will have to borrow at least 90 lakh rupees and will have to pay hefty EMIs for the next 15 years so basically for the next 15 years whatever she earns is going to go in EMIs leaving her with nothing more or less so what she decides is now she decides to go for a SUV just see how the need has now changed because of the affordability she is now going for a SUV that is going to have an EMI of 37,000 rupees for only next five years so that after next five years she can still have that freedom to do whatever she wants to do with her savings this is an extremely bad decision you might now say that Rahul this only happens in one of the cases who is going to make such bad decisions well let me actually present you the data so if we come down here and have a look at the chart you will see that the green line is the rate at which the vehicle loans are growing in India and the yellow line is what you see is the growth of home loan rates in India and you clearly see that the rate at which which the weaker loans are growing is far far higher than the home loans because people are making these stupid decisions and this is what I call placebo effect of spending because you're spending your money to get some placebo so that you are satisfied in the short term but forget about the long term picture and this is the reason I call this is one of the worst mistakes that people can make let me now give you the second example let us say you go to a mall with your friends and you see amazingly looking sunglasses only at 999 rupees and bam you're trapped you are going to buy that sunglasses but before you spend even a single rupee out of your pocket you must check whether that spend is within your monthly spend limit or not what is monthly spend limit monthly spend limit is the amount that you are allowed to spend every single month taking into account your salaries your other incomes as well as your debt liabilities and who decides that you decide it but most people do not have a monthly spend limit do you have one you must set it today because the moment you do that you are going to stop doing impulse spending also you are going to take out lot of placebo effect of spending from your spend giving you lot of savings that can grow at a healthy rate in the coming years and you are going to thank me for this later so far if you're liking this video humble request to press the like button and let me know in the comments a simple thank you note because it will encourage me to come up with more and more such videos that will help you in planning your personal finances and the fifth worst mistake that people make is that they do not understand the impact of compounding of the salary for this let me give you a quick example because examples make things really really clear at least in my head so what you see on my screen is two people person a and person b and you see both of them start their career let us assume in 2023 at a salary of 4 lakh rupees and now let us assume that person a does not really do any salary negotiations because they do not understand the art of salary negotiation while person b puts a lot of efforts in negotiating salary because this is the absolutely right thing to do but more importantly let me walk you through numbers so let us assume that 2023 both of them starts at 4 lakhs of salary in 2024 person A gets 10% salary hike but person B manages to negotiate it and only get 2% more than the person A same thing repeats again next year person A gets 15% hike but person B who negotiates the salary gets 2% more so every year you see here the pattern is that person B is able to negotiate 2% more salary and what happens as a result after 15 years if we see the additional income that person B is going to have is 43 lakh rupees 2% of salary increment is going to give you 43 lakh rupees because of compounding effect of salary because your first salary that you had here 4 lakh rupees if you increase it by 2% here you're going to see 448 
the next increment that you are going to have is on 448 so every increment that you are going to have is getting compounded on the previous increment and that is the beauty of compounding effect in salary in fact if you invest this additional salary every single year and let us assume 10 percent returns this 43 lakhs in the 15 years time is going to become close to 61 lakh rupees and if i assume 15 percent return then it is going to get to 73 lakh rupees just imagine the power of salary compounding here what we need to do is negotiate our salary in every single opportunity because the maximum you are going to get is a no but if you get your salary high even by two percent more then you are going to save a lot of money and if you invest that money you are going to get even further benefits talking about investments on my channel i talk about investments a lot in terms of stocks mutual funds you can consider subscribing to the channel as well as you can consider joining my member community youtube member community because that is where i also share exclusive in-depth analysis on stocks mutual funds that will help you increase your personal finance knowledge so that you can make informed decision now comes the sixth worst money mistake that I am not going to share with you. Yes, I'm not going to share with you the sixth money mistake because I really want you to tell me what is the money mistake that you think is the worst money mistake. Let me know in the comments. I would love to learn from you as well because all of you have your own experiences and I would love to hear out from you that what is that one worst money mistake that you want to add to this video. Let us go ahead and put that in the comment because whoever is reading the comments, they are also going to understand and learn from your own perspective which is going to be amazing from a community building perspective so let me know in the comments what do you think is the worst money mistake in your own experience and what i will do is i will pick up the best answer based on the reason that you provide and i will give them one of my favorite finance book called psychology of money delivered at your doorstep absolutely free as a gift from my side so let me know in the comments the sixth money mistake that you would like to add into this list if you want to get going with your investment journey i would request you to watch these two videos they will help you understand a lot about investing and lastly a humble request if you like this video do press the like button and let me know in the comments a simple message thank you it will encourage me to shoot such videos that will help you out with that i will see you in my next video until then keep rocking